Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Real Life. I hope you're having a great day. It's always a pleasure to share a new episode with you. Before we start today's episode, a reminder that you have access to our easy-to-use episode map guide, which will link you to all 1,300-plus episodes around the globe. Just click on the map link below, zoom into any part of the planet, click on the blue, red, or orange dot to connect you directly with that episode. The episode title and details will appear on the left side, click on the blue link, and you're on to that vintage reel or video. You may want to zoom in closer, as there may be more than one episode clustered together. This is a wonderful 13-minute reel of a ship that no longer exists. This reel captures a considerable amount of exterior detail. Sadly, no footage was captured inside her decks. The winter footage shows a cold tranquility during the winter shutdown. There's brief footage of the 1896-built bulk freighter Leedsdale, which was scrapped in 1955. There's plenty of background footage of lakefront buffalo to keep enthusiasts interested. The SS Canadiana was a passenger excursion steamer that primarily operated between Buffalo, New York and Crystal Beach Park in Crystal Beach, Ontario from 1910 to 1956. The ship was built at the Buffalo Dry Dock on Ganson Street, 1910, and was the last passenger vessel to be built in Buffalo. She was designed by marine architect Frank E. Kirby, who later designed the largest sidewheel overnight steamers built for the Great Lakes, the Greater Buffalo, and the Greater Detroit. To see more of the Greater Buffalo shortly before her conversion to aircraft carrier trainer, you can view episode 882. The completed ship was 215 feet long with 54 feet beam amidship. She was powered by one triple expansion steam engine that produced 1446 horsepower. A single propeller provided propulsion. Canadiana had a cutout in the main deck to allow passengers to view the workings of the engine. She was fitted with brass railings, red mahogany trim from Honduras, and beveled mirrors. She was designed to be a premier vessel designed not only for transportation, but also for pleasure. Originally intended to carry 3,500 passengers, it was decided by the United States Coast Guard that 1,800 was a safer number. With a reduction in passenger capacity, the ship's owners found room to construct the largest dance floor of any steamer that sailed the Great Lakes. After her completion, Canadiana joined her sister ship, Americana, which had been built in 1908. Both ships made round-trip passages between Buffalo and Crystal Beach until Americana was sold in 1929. Although the Canadiana was popularly known as the Crystal Beach Boat, she occasionally made journeys to other destinations, including Port Colburn, Ontario, while Crystal Beach remained her primary destination. During her crossings between Crystal Beach and Buffalo, big band concerts were often held aboard with performances by some of the region's most famous musical acts, including some that regularly performed within the park's large ballroom building. After the completion of the Peace Bridge in 1927, which allowed automobile traffic between Buffalo and Crystal Beach, the Canadiana became less popular. Ticket prices were kept low to attract enough passengers to make the trip profitable. During the Second World War, the Canadiana saw an increase in business due in part to wartime gasoline rationing. A British pilot with the Royal Canadian Air Force was killed when he lost control of his aircraft while buzzing the Canadiana during the war.
The crewmen working on the ship in spring in the black and white segment add great detail to the required preparation at the start of the season. In its last year of service, an incident happened on board the Canadiana. While returning from Crystal Beach to Buffalo the evening of May 30, 1956, violence erupted between several youths. The group of belligerents, made up of whites and African Americans, left little doubt that racism was a factor in the incident. This incident, along with shrinking revenues, made continued operation of the ship uneconomical. The 1956 season proved to be the last for the Canadiana, and she was sold. After being sold, the Canadiana was involved in an accident on July 30, 1958. While on her normal excursion trip traveling upstream on the Maumee River from her berth in Toledo to Bolo Island, the Canadiana was struck by a railroad swing bridge and damaged. The Canadiana was sold in 1960 and was towed to Cleveland, Ohio before being officially renamed Pleasurama. From 1960 through 1967, the Canadiana was stored at Buffalo, Fairport, and Cleveland. She sank at her berth in Cleveland on February 17, 1982, and was not refloated until May 1983. Following her refloat, she was moved to Ashtabula, Ohio. A non-profit group called the Friends of the Canadiana was formed in 1983 to try to save the ship and restore her to service. A fundraising effort was undertaken and she was purchased by the group. The Canadiana was towed back to Buffalo during September 1984. In July 1988, after being stripped down for restoration to return her to sailing conditions under modern regulations, the Canadiana was towed to the Marsh Engineering Dock at Port Colborne for dry docking. During 1993, changes were implemented regarding the restoration efforts. On July 1, 1993, the name of the organization was changed to the SS Canadiana Preservation Society, Incorporated. Along with the name change, membership of the corporate board of directors was undertaken and efforts were made for the corporation to be designated as an education corporation. These changes were undertaken by the organization with the eventual goal of being accredited as a full-fledged museum. A number of studies on a ship and its use were carried out in the 1990s. When restoration plans were not realized, the remaining hull of the Canadiana was cut up for scrap in 2004 at Port Colborne, Ontario. The ship's engine was salvaged and returned to Buffalo to be part of a planned exhibit. Much of the wooden superstructure, including the pilot house, was saved. Some of the salvaged wood was made into various memorabilia. Very little footage of the Canadiana exists online. Being 16mm Kodachrome and well composed, this is likely some of the best detailed footage captured in her waning years. There possibly is some old home movies forgotten in trunks and attics in Ontario and around Buffalo. It would be a delight to find more of these old reels. Don't forget to subscribe, as that's the only way you'll learn of the new episodes being released Fridays and Saturdays. Thank you for helping fill in the blanks on all these episodes. On occasions, I do make mistakes. I mispronounce locations and sometimes overlook some details. I very much appreciate the corrections you share on the comments section. It's a delight seeing the collaboration among viewers. 
It's even more meaningful when I learn that a family member or friend is recognized, even 50 plus years later. The episode closes with the Canadiana returning to dock after a trip. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Be kind, and we'll see you next time on Real Life.